This is YFZ450. We're gonna do a complete new front end. So this stock suspension is gone. And we're gonna go long travel, Elka with a roll design. And in the rear, we're gonna put the uh, linkage and the Elka shock. Check it out. Stay tuned right here. Nice beefy rear Elka. Front piggybacks, Elka, and this roll design suspension right here, plus two. Streamline clamps and streamline smoked brake lines. Check it out. There's gonna be a full transformation on this YFZ. The first thing we're gonna do is raise the front end with a jack right in the middle where the wheels could spin. And we're gonna go ahead and get our lug nuts taken off. Shit, well, this is just showing you what's going on. Take those off and then we're gonna go ahead and take off one side at a time, okay? In order so you don't have the wheel spin, just go ahead and drop the jack. I was just showing you guys what's going on. That way the weight will hold the tire from spinning and you'll take it off a lot easier. All right? All right, so there we go. Let's take everything off. It's gonna be to uh, go ahead and remove all the cotter pins. All right, straighten them out. Use a little hammer or whatever you might need, pull them off, okay? All the joints we're gonna take off. Usually it's better just take off the spindle. Okay, there's another one and the one under there. I usually like to spray a little penetrating. Okay, that makes it a lot easier when it comes to loosening them up after you take off the cotter pins. All right. Next step after you took off the cotter pins, make sure you loosen up and take off the, the cotter pins, I mean, take off the caliper. So it gives you enough room so you can get into these. All right, here we go. Okay, now I already took off the spindle and the caliper. All right, and the actual bottom bolt on the shock. From here, I could then go ahead, okay, and start messing with the arms and the shock, which is the easiest part. Put your spindle and your caliper to the side. Save the bolts. In case they don't come with the kit, you have the stock. The arms are off. Next thing I did is disconnect this line for the brakes, and uh, from there, we're going to go ahead and start putting the suspension in. While the tie rod is still on, make sure you loosen up this nut, that way it makes it easier. And then just unroll the, unscrew the tie rod, and then all you're going to do is screw your new tie rod back in. And the only one you're going to have to remove is this tie rod in here, so you can install it on the new tie rod. Alright, right now I'm going to just clean all this area, make sure it's good, and then we're going to mount in the A-arms. What you got to do, I forgot to let you guys know, on your old A-arms you have to remove these uh, dust caps. You know, for the oil in there, they hold the grease and everything in. You gotta move the pivots out of here. Check and make sure that they're not worn or, you know, unevenly unbalanced or rusted or seized up. Take everything off. Your new arms will come with new bushings. And just pull out all the pivot bearings. Once you got them all off, make sure you don't lose none of the caps. Clean everything up and put them onto your new arms. If you're buying new caps, new pivot kits, well, totally these will just go to the trash or eBay. Here we are, YFZ with no front end. Looks like shit. Okay, and now all I'm doing is getting everything cleaned up and prepped up. What I did is I just removed the headlights, two bolts, so I can get access to the top of the brake line, right there. Okay, that. This this actually what it does it right there it holds um, the brake line the top piece of it and you just pull the, the that metal clip right off and then uh, the line will come out. What I did already, I disconnected the top brake line from the top and then what I did is I usually like to just snip off the hard line so then I have the leftover um, flexible holes down here which is no good no more it's junk because we're putting all new steel braided lines. Then you want to go ahead and get your your two braided lines together. It has a double banjo bolt on the top. Put the actual crush washers that come with it, so you can have it ready, and that way you can put it in at the top of the brake reservoir. Okay, very simple, no issues. And then the two bottom parts of the lines are gonna go one to each caliper. Okay, all right, very simple. Let's go ahead and do that. What it's got to look like. Okay, 
Make sure you clean out your reservoir. Make sure it's all nice and clean. So you put new brake fluid. This is the dumb, double banjo bolt right there. All the lines, how they're supposed to go. Okay, crush washers. It's not tying up because I'm still gonna be moving it. And through the hole that you pull it out, the old brake line, that's where you run your two brake lines through. Okay, run them back out. All the way down. You can see the shadow right there, the line. Okay, here we go. And just run them here, straight through the middle. From here, this section you're gonna split one that way and one this way, and you're good. And then you're gonna clamp them onto your arms. Now I already washed all these dust caps, you know, that are gonna go on the arms. My pivots are all nice and clean. Next step I'm gonna do per side, you're gonna need four of these caps for the two for the bottom part of the arm, one on each end, and two more for the top arm. Okay, before you go ahead and put these pivots in there, I suggest that you go ahead, clean them, and also use a waterproof grease, something like this Maxima will work out great. Okay, grease up the pivots so they slide in really nice. Okay, and then don't worry about any extra grease because you're going to do that after you're done by putting grease through the grease fittings. Okay, once you have greased them, you put in the pivot and you put on the caps, and this is what they should look like. Okay. And now they're ready to put on the bike and you got to make sure you put your bolts and everything i'll show you what's up so very easy if you have the right tools little impact 14 and 17 mil very easy man i already set everything up okay nice and tight this is just reaching them up same thing on the other side okay if you can't get in there like this, what I do, I usually just reverse the situation and grab my other impact. Okay, let me show you. So, here we go. I got my little side angle snap on. Put it on on. 14 mil socket. See how easy it is to slide it in. Hold it over here. Nice and tight. Once you're set with that, there they are. They're nice and tightened up. Now what you got to do is bring in your shock, set it up. These uh torquing them is the best way to go just look at your yamaha specs and you'll be good to go okay so right here what i already did come right here with the camera i already went ahead and put the tie rods in you never take off the top one because that one could stay and i just screw in the tie rod into the top one lube it too so it makes it easier and then i put in the tie rod end on the outside all right i reached it i kind of leveled everything with the steering so we can make sure that we're very close to what I need, okay? And then I already set everything up here where I'm gonna need the spindle to lay. If you look, I'm gonna straighten it out, and then if I let it drop, okay, great, but then when I tighten it up, it's gonna bring it in. I'm gonna be almost exact by the time I got everything tightened up. Bring in your nice snap-on gun or whatever kind of tools you might have with a swivel head, okay? Get this all lined up, carefully bring it in. Beautiful, okay? No issues. I'm gonna come back. And with a crescent wrench, I will then counter this so I can actually straighten out the ball joint so it won't be in this angle. Just make sure you don't leave it tied up in an angle that's gonna be sideways because that's the incorrect way to do it. Okay, you're gonna do your crescent wrench, come in here, loosen it up, and make sure that you position it to the right angle, okay? Oops. Ah, right there see so that allows to move it and then we just go ahead and tie up the other side to counter it it's nice and level okay great uh i'm gonna torque everything down to specs uh that's gonna be the next step and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that with these new castle nuts we tighten them up torque them down and we put our cotter pins don't forget you gotta put back your cotter pins that were on there brand new and that side insole should be ready we're gonna just from there do calipers bleed them and then that's the next step okay all right all right so here we are check it out these are the clamps for your brake lines okay these are by streamline there's different brands uh so what you do in this situation okay look at up here up here we're gonna go ahead and uh take the allen bolt out depending on your model it might if you have the thinner top a arm then that you're gonna need this bushing on there if you go ahead and you have the fatter arm, you won't need it, so you throw it away, it's trash. So you're gonna actually pretty much wrap around. You're gonna feel it snug and then you're gonna reach the Allen bolt, tighten it up. If you can see right here, I already put one up 
in advance on this side. You want to run on your line like the stock line ran, but obviously it's an aftermarket arm, so it's going to need an angle. So sometimes you got to put it up higher or down lower. If you have the money to buy two sets, I'd re recommend do two sets that way you can put two clamps on each end and it'll fit a lot nicer. Okay, from here, what we're going to do is I already got my caliper ready to go. Okay, make sure that there's no dirt, dust, any other junk on there. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to clean it because it's going to most likely get dirty. Yeah, make sure you got your two bolts for the caliper. Okay. Slide them in. Put your 12s in there. Bam, bam, bam. Go ahead and look for that other bolt. Give me one second. After I reach everything down, I got to go back to my torque stick and start with the torque stick. This I did so I could go ahead and position my line. Okay. You gotta put the bolt in, the crush washer, and then the other crush washer first. Then you could go ahead and thread them in the caliper. Okay. Obviously, as you can see, this brake line is too far down. Check it out. So I just linked up everything earlier before. You see how now we got this bunch of slack here so we know that obviously these lines come a little long no issues loosen up the clamp okay if it gets to where you can't really slide it through then completely take the allen bolt off all this excess line is going to have to go up and under the front cover okay you want to make sure that look at it now that this line here this brake line still is re reaches when it turns, it's not going to be pulling, okay? But it's just right, and then it's not actually going to be rubbing up against the cotter pin or up against the tie rod, because if it does that, it's going to eventually tear it up. And it has to have enough line down, so it bends it down, and so it has a good angle for the line to set. That way it doesn't bend or bind. All right, so that's pretty much where we're at now. Now from here, I could reach and tighten up this clamp and look at it now. Yeah, it'll come in nice and straight but if you have the extra clamp then you just put it right here you have two nice clamps would be kicking some ass okay, in this situation I don't but I will recommend it to my customer okay so pretty much we're set there next step is gonna be bleeding it what I did to this side right here is gonna be exactly what you're gonna do to the opposite side if I go ahead and run through the opposite side, it's gonna take you longer so just copy what I did here and you'll be good over there I'm gonna show next step is gonna be the bleeding and the final alignment and you're done. Okay. Here the whole system's on. Whole front end. And now what I'm doing, I'm bleeding out the lines. I just finished it. You see the screw will run right through. Open up the, the bleeder. Bam, bam, bam. Fill up the top. Clean up all this shit. Got brand new fluid. Check your brake. We'll take your hub. Okay. You're in there. There goes the lines. Now I gotta start aligning all this stuff. Step after bleeding the lines, you gotta go ahead and grease the A arms. Okay. Remember, we were talking about the grease fitting. So here we are. Check it out. Zoom into this spot. If you don't have a greaser like this, then you gotta you can buy a manual one. Keep pumping until you hear the machine slow down. Oh, there you go. Start or it starts to come out the sides. You want to make sure you get enough grease in there because it's a brand new set of arms. Okay, here we go. Once again. Starts to slow down. That means it's already getting full. Lots of pressure. Okay, once you're done doing the bleed, watch this. There you go. Gets tight. Starts to come. You don't want to make a mess. You just want to get the grease that you need in there. Okay, there we go. All right, so as you're greasing, and then I'm going to put on the tires. After that, I'm going to go ahead and align it and I'm going to show you what's up. All right, cool. Here we are. This is the YFZ450. This is the finished product right here. Okay, I'm going to give it a second. I'm going to try to see if I can. This is what we got going. Look how high, how much of a clearance he gets off the floor. So 
So now this won't be an issue when he's off-roading. And when he launches and lands, it's gonna tear that shit up nicely. Okay, so that's just the front end. I'm gonna line it. Pretty much I got it really close. The alignment on this, you gotta do with your tie rods by turning them either in or out. And that'll make the wheel turn out or in depending on what you need. I got it really close already, so I'm not that far away. I'm gonna do the rear shock, I'll show you what's cracking. We just finished the install of the rear shock too. You can see the piggybacks on the front shocks. There's a reservoir for the back shock. It has a real long steel braided line that I ran behind the headlight and be set right between the tank and the frame all the way back to the rear end of the shock. Okay, that's the Alka right there. It's gonna be a nice plush ride. It's a lot, the bike sits a lot taller, a lot nicer all the way around. We just gotta do some adjustments on the suspension. And this job is done already, guys. There you go. How to install the front end on a YFZ450. Killer shit. Contact us, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Advanced Motorsports.